These are the most iconic revolts in Philippine history from late 1500s to early 1800s. We're excluding the revolts during and beyond the time period of Jose Rizal and only focusing on the ones that stand out the most. Here are the top 10 most iconic Filipino revolts against Spain. Number 10, Basi Revolt. This revolt revolves around the Ilocano people's love for Basi or sugarcane wine. In 1786, the Spanish colonial government took property of the manufacture and sale of Basi, banning private manufacturers of the wine. Ilocanos were forced to buy wine from government stores as they were prohibited to drink homemade Basi. The wine-loving Ilocanos from Pidig Ilocos Norte rose in revolt, led by Pedro Ambaristo, to defend their favorite wine. As the revolt spread to nearby towns, the Spanish Alcalde Mayor sent Spanish troops to attack the Ilocanos, ending the revolt. Number 9. Agrarian Revolt The land grabbing of the Spanish friars caused this revolt. Filipino landowners demanded the friars to return their land but they refused. So it resulted to a riot which caused massive looting of convents and arson of churches and ranches. This case was then investigated by the Spanish officials and was also heard in King Philip IV's court. He ordered the friars to return the lands they took but they were successfully able to appeal the return of lands back to the natives. So the result, no lands were given back to the native landowners. Number 8. Tamblot Revolt Tamblot was of a Bailan or a native priest of Bohol who asked the natives to go back to their old faith and persuaded them to abandon the Catholic religion and rise against the Spaniards. Around 2,000 Boholanos responded to his call. The revolt started when the Jesuit priests were in Cebu celebrating the feast of the beatification of St. Francis Xavier. Tamblot and the natives burned the villages and churches supervised by Jesuits, throwing away all crosses and rosaries they could find. The news about the revolt reached Cebu. Don Juan de Alcarazo, the Alcalde Mayor, immediately sent an expedition to Bohol, consisting of 50 Spaniards and more than 1,000 natives from Cebu and Pampanga. In the midst of the battle in the heavy rain, Tamblot and his followers were crushed. But there was also a different version of the story. It says that in the following battle in the rain at Malabago, Bohol, the mayor was wounded and the Spanish had to retreat. Then, in the second attempt after six months, the rebels were victorious again. But some Spanish priests from Laboc managed to enter Tamblot's camp and assassinated him. After losing their leader, the rebels were easily defeated and the Spanish power was restored. Number 7. Lakandula Revolt In 1571, Raja Lakandula, the native Muslim ruler of Tondo, made a pact with Miguel Lopez de Legazpi to submit his land to him and to hand over his throne, which led to Manila being the capital of the Spanish colony. When a Chinese pirate named Limahong planned to conquer Manila, Lakandula helped resist the attack. When Lopez de Legazpi died in 1572, Governor General Guido de Levesaris took his place and did not honor Lacandula and Lopez de Legazpi's agreements and even tolerated Spanish abuses. The Spaniards took over their lands and encomenderos oppressed Filipinos. Because of this, Lacandula and Raja Suleiman revolted against the Spaniards in Navotas. The revolt did not succeed and Governor General Levisaris, with the help of Spanish and Filipino colonial troops, was able to stop the rebellion and restore order in Manila. Number 6. First Pampanga Revolt In 1585, Kapampangan leaders led a revolt against Spanish encomenderos due to abuses felt by the natives caused by the encomenderos. The Kapampangan leaders plotted to storm in Tramuros, but the plot was hindered before it was even implemented because a Filipino married to a Spanish soldier reported the plot to the Spanish authorities. Because of this, the leaders of the revolt were executed.
Number 5. Manyago Revolt Farmers were required to sell their goods to the government due to the bandala system and they were forced to endure unfair practices, such as polo or forced labor. The government did not offer fair market prices. As a result, they owed the local more than 200,000 pesos due to unpaid rice purchases. Pampanga's rice production suffered. As a means to protest, the workers mutinied and set their campsite on fire. The armed rebels gathered in Lubao with Maniago, a chief and the chosen leader of the revolt. They sent out letters inviting other chiefs to join with the uprising. The Spaniards tried to end the rebellion immediately. Governor Manrique de Lara began with a show of force and the divide and rule trick, bringing with him 300 men in Makabebe. Seeing the well-armed Spaniards, the Pampangueños showed cordiality. This strategy was also done to other towns in the province. In the end, Maniago and his followers did not have a choice but to agree in making peace with Governor de Lara. The governor tricked Maniago into leaving Manila by bribing him to be appointed a master of camp in the Pampanga Regiment of the city. Maniago was never heard from again and according to one account, he was shot months later in Mexico, Pampanga. Number 4. Pule Revolt In June 1840, Apolinario de la Cruz, also known as Hermano Pule, started his own religion and called it Confragia de San Jose, located in Tayabas, now known as Quezon Province. The Spanish government were not pleased and banned the new order. However, thousands of people in Tayabas, Batangas, Laguna, and Manila already joined. Because of this, the Spanish government sent troops to forcibly break the order, forcing De La Cruz and his followers to rise in armed revolt. Many bloody battles were fought in Mount San Cristobal in October 1841, resulting to the loss of not just men but also women and children. The Spaniards eventually won and De La Cruz was executed through capital punishment. Number 3. Sumuroy Revolt Under the leadership of Juan Sumuroy, the people of Palapag Samar rose in revolt against the government due to forced labor. They resented Governor Diego Fajardo's order which involved sending men to Cavite shipyards to do their polo. The local parish priest of Palapag was murdered. The revolt spread to Albay and Camarines, Cebu, Masbate, Camiguin, and as far as northern Mindanao. Sumoroy won several victories. At one time, the Spanish commander offered a large sum of money in exchange for Sumoroy's head. The rebels sent him the head of a pig instead. In July 1650, under cover of darkness and rainfall, the government forces staged a surprise attack on the natives' fort. The rebels were taken off guard. The defeat and capture of Sumoroy led to the end of the revolt. The rebels themselves killed Sumuroy and brought his head to the Spanish commander. Number 2. The Gohai Revolt This revolt is unique since it's the only Philippine revolt completely related to matters of religious customs. After a duel in which Francisco the Gohai's brother died, the local parish priest refused to give his brother a proper Christian burial, since dueling is a mortal sin. The refusal of the priest to give his brother a proper Christian burial led to the longest revolt ever held in Philippine history, lasting for 85 years. The Gohoy with his men raided the Jesuit estate of San Javier. Because of the killings, the Spanish authorities tortured and killed the Gohoy's future father-in-law. This drove more people to join the Gohoy. 20 governor generals from Juan Arechedera to Manuel Ricofort Palacin e Ararca failed to stop the revolt. Ricofort himself sent a force of 2,200 troops to Bohol, which was defeated by the Gohoy's followers. Another attack, also sent by Ricofort in 1828 and 1829, failed as well. The Gohoy died two years before the revolt ended, though which led to the end of the revolt in 1829. 19,000 survivors were granted pardon and were eventually allowed to live in new Boholano villages.
Last but not the least, number one, Silang Revolt. One of the most famous revolts in Philippine history led by Diego and Gabriela Silang. Diego Silang was known as a trusted messenger in vegan Ilocos. He has traveled from Ilocos to Manila delivering letters and documents. He later noticed of the colonial injustice and witnessed the many abuses of the Spanish government and the Roman Catholic Church. He took with him the idea and opportunity to plan a revolt. Diego Silang declared the independence of Ilocania, naming the state Free Ilocos and proclaimed Vigan the capital of this newly independent state. He later organized Ilocanos to fight with the British forces as the revolt took place in the Manila British invasion. The British heard of this revolt and asked to help them out to fight against Spain. The Spaniards made a bounty for Diego's head and promised a payment for his assassination. Diego was shot and killed by his own friends, Miguel Vicos and Pedro Becbec. He died in the arms of his wife, Gabriela. Gabriela Silang then took command of the revolt, earning the title John of Arc of the Ilocos because of her many victories. Unfortunately, she was later captured and executed through public hanging. You've reached the end of the list. Unfortunately, more revolts followed through the years even leading to the events of World War I and II. Eventually, the Philippines finally gained their freedom from Spain in June 12, 1898, otherwise known as the Philippines Independence Day. The rest that followed, well, that's another story.